When there's so much going for India as the world's leading soft power, what it must of course be balanced off is with an internal, internal commitment, not only to the secular and democratic values that we stand for, but for the eternal values of compassion, of bhakti, of sadhana, of inclusiveness of all religions and the philosophies that live in, on our land. The good, what is good for the majority is good for all. I think that premise is flawed. We all possibly agree with that. It is incumbent upon us to remain sensitive to the needs of all. There's more to Hinduism and to Indianness than religion and temples. M.F. Hussein's banishment, if you like, Wendy Doniger's book on Hinduism, the ban on beef in Maharashtra, the burning of churches, the rape of a 71-year-old nun, the ban of, on India's daughters, the terming as anti-national Priya Pillay's debate on alleged forest uh, violations, the list of cuss words now not permitted in cinema, the Ministry of Health's campaign against uh, smoking that butts into the creative expression of a filmmaker. Uh, Perumal Murugan's, uh, the censure of him as a writer, the attack on the office of Pudhiya Talemuri, Murai, a Tamil news channel, for discussing, ironically on International Women's Day, the need for, uh, for married women to wear a tali or not. And effectively then, silencing the voices of all the women who wanted to discuss it. How are we going to live down these aberrations? <laughs>